He's the chairman, CEO, and co-founder of real estate giant Boston Properties, chairman and publisher of the New York Daily News, and chairman and editor-in-chief of U.S. News and World Report. We are very happy to have you on Street Smart today, Mort Zuckerman. Hi, hi, hi. You, it's a very <laughs> optimistic day. I'm glad to be here. Optimistic. Well, it was optimistic yesterday with the markets up nearly 300 points there on the Dow. We got another triple digit gain here. Is this sustainable in, given all that's going on in the world right now? Well, I mean, I think what is supporting the market, frankly, are 10 year treasuries at 166. Uh, the alternatives uh, for investment are not very attractive in terms of yield. But I also am very, very uh, concerned about the economy. So I don't know how to predict the stock market, but I do think the economy is in very, very rough shape. Mm -hmm. I've been bearish on the economy for quite a while. I still am. The unemployment numbers that we saw, e even those numbers understate the gravity of the problems we are facing in terms of employment and consumer confidence and consumer incomes. So I think we're in, re we're in for a really difficult time. You know, you mentioned unemployment. You said it really doesn't even capture all that's going on. I mean, the U6 unemployment rate captures a little bit more. more. Let's take a look at here. This includes the unemployed people working part time for economic reasons and, and those who are uh, working or, or no longer working or looking for work but still want a job. Um, and you argue that this still doesn't give us the whole picture, that in fact things are much right. worse than even the U6 is showing. Right. I mean, if you count uh, the uh, what is called U6, U6 is about 14.8 percent of uh, the most recent numbers. If you add to that the people who have left the labor force completely, just basically completely discouraged, uh, you're talking about numbers that are closer to uh, 18 percent. But in addition to that, the, one of the most remarkable statistics is that there are four million people working in the cohort between the ages of 55 and 65 who based on historical experience would not be working today mm -hmm. and the reason they are frankly is because their incomes are very much up in the air and they're concerned about it their home values have gone down so they're not leaving their jobs in the way that they used to but what it's done is it's created a bottleneck at the other net at the other end where young people are virtually unable to get jobs or at least to a much much lower levels than have been uh, 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 the history of our past. And therefore, these people who've never had a job, they don't really show up on the uh, unemployment numbers. Mm -hmm. So the unemployment numbers are worse even than that. This is college graduates, right? If you graduate not from college necessarily. you're looking for a job right. uh, and, and you can't find one, you're still not included in any way, right. even in the U6 number. And it's not just college. You know, uh, people at the age of 18 to 21 are also looking for jobs. A lot of people are now looking for jobs because their family income is down. They're concerned about their economic futures. And the job market is very, very, very weak. And that is bound to have a major economy. I don't care what the numbers are. I don't care how the government says, oh, boy, it's only 8.2 percent. There are 30 million people out there who don't have jobs, who want jobs. They have spouses. They have friends. They have children. Everybody knows how bad the job is, the job market is. Do you think we're in a recession right now? Well, I don't think you can call it a recession in a technical sense because we have to have a decline of GDP for two quarters in a row, and we haven't had that. But we're having a very, very weak growth in the GDP in the context of the largest uh, fiscal and monetary stimulus in our history. So you, we we grew what at 1.9 percent in the last quarter. The, that that rate we would normally be at somewhere between six and eight percent growth in GDP given the size of the stimulus. But it's not there, and nobody quite understands why, because this is an unprecedented kind of recession that we are in, and it is therefore unpredictable. They, they have a real problem. Know? They have a real problem. Yeah. With the 10-year Treasury down at 1.65 percent, there's very little room to get interest rates lower. Nobody can tell you that the Fed hasn't improved and decreased the money supply. What are their options at this stage of the game that are really going to have an effect on the economy when the, the, we have had the most stimulative monetary policy in our history and it's still ongoing? Where does he go next with it that is going to have an effect on the economy? That's his real problem. And perhaps a trickier problem for the Fed chief is how does he communicate to the markets and to the world that he's on top of it and that he's prepared to do something should the situation in Greece in Europe get worse. I think his investors are asking exactly what Mort just said. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, what else are you going to do right. at this point? No, they're, um, they're tapped out. I mean, they've gone through two QEs. Operation Twist does end at the end of this month. So one potential option, and this is something that Atlanta Fed President Dennis Lockhart talked about, extending that Operation Twist. But, you know, the more they do these stimulative measures, the less oomph they really have. Perhaps it's just a lot of hope 
in the markets. China, by the way, has a lot more scope for easing, and this was the first interest rate cut since 2008. As we say about hope, it's a good breakfast but a poor supper, and we may be on the evening snack right now when it comes to monetary policy.